The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue, declares the prophet Isaiah in our first reading on this atypical Palm Sunday. An announcement which under most circumstances indeed would be a very valuable and timely gift, especially for public speakers, certainly for preachers, attorneys, television personalities, professors, and a whole host of other people who make their living using the proficiency of speech. But a well-trained tongue alone will not halt or account for the torment that Christ will endure as we begin this unusual Holy Week's commemoration of our redemption. Lots of people over the centuries who have used their ability to speak or to write eloquently could not make sense of what we will ritually behold this week under an extraordinary pattern. In the face of what Christ will endure, all speech is insufficient to be sure. Suffering and tragedy of the type we are about to remember are often beyond what mere words can adequately express. Silence is often the only response that the human heart is capable of offering in the face of violence and heartbreak. This week, we do not need eloquent words. We only need eyes and hearts that understand in ways that words can never sufficiently explain how deeply we are loved by the Lord of the universe. Later this week, St. John the Evangelist will ultimately have Christ himself go silent in the face of the false allegations of the religious authorities and the mob's hatred that he humbly and freely accepted. The ability to speak convincingly is simply never sufficient to explore the depths of love and suffering that Christians celebrate this week. Pope Francis's prayer and words of blessing last week were intensified by the stark absence of God's people in St. Peter's Square. The silence of the moment. Palm Sunday stands at the start of the holiest and most important days in the church year. And the words that each of us speaks tell the whole world that we all share in the cries of the mob. We all raise our voices calling for Christ's crucifixion as we just heard during the proclamation of the Passion according to St. Matthew. Oh, a few of us might like to suggest that those cries are merely the phrases of those who were truly responsible for his death. We were just listening to the expressions a few moments ago that we have read in the Bible or heard from our childhood. I dare to disagree. No, the words that we just heard reflect the ways that we all have lived at time in the past. And they confirm our deepest desire that he die for us. This week involves all of us, not just the religious leadership of Christ's own time, but every Christian throughout the ages who has ever betrayed the dignity of our calling by our sinfulness, our hatred, 
our pettiness, our lies, and our dishonesty. None of us can claim to stand casually by as individuals without responsibility and therefore innocent of that man's death. Our well-trained tongues join those of Christians throughout the ages in shouting for his crucifixion so that we might eventually be able to marvel at and to enjoy the benefits of his resurrection and new life.